Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. It's Wednesday afternoon here in lovely Southern California. I'm inside right now because there's some neighbors outside at the same time that I want to record. And if I were to do this outside, then not only would you hear them, they would hear me. And I'd rather not. Uh, that's a little bit embarrassing for me to have to have other people listen to me record videos. So there's a reason why I record videos when no one else is around in the house, because I just feel more comfortable. I can just, I can just talk about all the random bullshit that I'm into. We're doing another video on the AKG K340. We have another mod today. And I bet you can tell what this mod is. Well, you'd be correct in saying that it is indeed underneath this pad. I don't know how you saw it, but we changed the baffle piece. Look at that. That is gorgeous, right? It's a Fibonacci sequence, 3D printed on both of the cups. Gosh, is that gorgeous. And it's in white too. Shout out to the person that made them, a very close person to me. They 3D printed this for me because my 3D printer is junk, but it was a little bit messy when I got it. And I had to clean it up a little bit. It was just a little bit stringy and you can see the edges are a little bit frayed, but I, that looks, that just looks stunning. I, I, I mentioned before in the original video how with the original baffle pieces, the juxtaposition between the grill plate and the electric driver, I thought that was really, really pretty. This though, this is gorgeous. This is like, wow, look at that. Facetious strokes aside though, that's actually, I'm gonna talk about like this. I just wanna talk about these first. So uh, I have these pieces right here. So the original mod was that you would take the baffle piece and carve out the center of it with the idea being that the baffle, like the, the mesh grill, the problem with it was that when the sound came out of the driver, the baffle piece would interfere with the sound waves coming out. And so it would muffle the sound. And so it would just cause a little bit more chaos going on in the cup. And in the end result, you would get a reduced sound quality. To what degree that is true, I'm skeptical. I think it might affect it just a tiny bit, but not to the amount that it would be anything really noticeable. That said, this does reduce the weight a little bit, and I just think this looks really pretty. Now, it's kind of a moot point since this has acoustically transparent fabric built into the cup itself. But if you were to use the stock pads, where they had no fabric in the center, then that would be very, very nice because the problem with these, right, is your ear would be allowed to hit the electric driver. And that's a no-no for me, just because I'm not a big fan of having any part of my body interacting, interacting with any metal pieces that are being electrically conducted, even if it's just a tiny amount of electricity. I, I just don't think that's a good idea. The second part of that mod was to put an acoustically transparent fabric to act as a barrier between your ear and the electric driver. But this is, this is just as good. These are actually the original ones that I personally designed. I, I did not design that baffle piece. This is the one that I designed. It was meant to follow the original design that was described online. This is pretty close to what I have in here, but the problem is these holes here. So there's a little notch at the top and then two holes. It, it almost looks symmetrical, right? We have one here, one here and one here, but they're actually not. And that's what really threw me for a loop the first time I tried to put these in. These two holes, this one and this one, don't line up with those two holes that are actually there. And that was a source of much frustration because I attempted this twice. This is the first version, this is the second version. And oh my God, this caused so much pain. The first version, was too high, the second version was too low. It was literally right in between. I was just, just a tiny bit off. Oh, I was so, I was so upset. I, I can't even get into the amount of detail of how upset I was. But I found the dude online on Thingiverse, I can't remember his name, I'll put his name like here or something to give as a shout out. He created a baffle piece for these headphones. That was just the most random thing. Like after I printed this out was when I found that dude's baffle piece and I was like, no way, someone actually made this already. I was like, yo, that's crazy. That is crazy. I can't believe someone actually did this. 
So I decided, fuck it, I'll just print these out and use them instead of whatever I was trying to do. This actually works out a little bit better too because I think it looks a little bit more aesthetic. And if I'm using the stock pads, it's gonna look really, really nice. Really, really nice. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, just, just look at that. Like the white juxtaposed with the black and the silver, it's like, wow. Wow, look at that, that's really pretty. Even though you won't see it with the pads, I just, oh, I think it looks gorgeous. I'm gonna post a link to the baffle piece. It's an STL file. If you have access to a 3D printer, you should be able to print it out. The 3D printers nowadays are pretty cheap. I've been seeing people post it online, like used 3D printers for around 50 bucks, I think. And they're pretty solid ones too. These aren't very big and it's a pretty simple piece to print out. It doesn't require too much material and the amount of time that you'd be spending to print it out will probably only be in the range of like an hour, two hours maybe. It's like nothing, it's no time at all. Definitely worth it. I think it's just a, it's a pretty neato mod and it might improve the sound a little bit depending on how thick your ears are. Which is to say, probably not at all, but like if it's placebo for you, then excellent. That's great. Let's get on to this thing. This is probably the more important mod. I mentioned in the first video how I had no problem with the stock cable. In fact, I actually liked the cable. I like the weight of the cable, weight of the fable. I like the weight of the cable. I like the way it felt in my hand. I like that it was spiraled. I thought that was pretty cool looking. The only issue that I had, uh, the only thing I had an issue with was the jack. And you see, I replaced the jack here. It's a nice, beautiful Neutrik. I, I love Neutriks because they're made out of very solid material. It's very easy to construct too because there's no screws. You just kind of twist it on. And I think it looks great. This isn't the first attempt at the cable mod though. The first attempt dealt with dual entry XLR cables. It, it was one wire came out here, one wire came out here. I'll post a photo as I'm talking about it. So it was dual entry. It met up at a point and then afterwards it separate or not separate. It combined together into a single wire that I braided. And the problem that I had with that one was that one, in order to do the dual entry, you need a hole here. And I wasn't willing to cut the piece out. I would need to redesign this entire side panel right here to create a little hole there instead of destroying it. So that way, this actually closes. Because if you don't create that hole, it's just gonna stay open like this the entire time. It doesn't close all the way. And that reduces the amount of mobility that you have with the headphone. The second issue that I was having was the point that they were all connecting at. It needed something to keep it all together because it was just kind of hanging loosely around. It was very rudimentary. It wasn't, it didn't look aesthetically pleasing. It looked a little bit wonky. Third problem was that the cables that came, once they all came together, they were too thick. They were way, way, way too thick. And the fourth problem is that it was just a pain in the ass to wire everything. I should have just gotten a single cable with four wires in it that were shielded. And that would be the best way to do it. You can actually do dual entry to three pin XLR male, I believe, and then create an adapter to three pin XLR to four pin XLR, which is uh, stereo XLR. Uh, if you do three pin, that's left and right. So you have to do one for each. And then that's why you have the four pin XLR to go into stereo for both to make it one single cable. But that's me talking about random crap. Anyway, the original idea I had for this video was that I would show you step-by-step step my process of making this cable but that, that took forever. And that was just a very long, tedious video and it's very boring. So I'm just gonna describe it, the nice short version. So there's two cables, one, two cables for each driver. In the left cup, these two cables attach to these wires here. I'll probably post some photos as I'm talking about it. So the, the left wire is the ground wire and the right wire is the sound wire. When you're doing this mod, because it travels from this cup, right? So this is right, this is left, this is the right ear cup, this is the sound cable, this is the ground cable. As it travels through these steel bands to the other side, the one carrying the sound is this one and the one carrying the ground is this one. So you just have to remember that in this case it's flipped, but when you're wiring it all together, this is sound, this is ground. For the, cup, for the driver that's in this cup, this is ground, or this is sound, this is ground. Saying words that rhyme with each other make it difficult to speak. This is a silver coated copper wire wrapped in PTFE, Teflon, I believe. I can't remember. And then this is, they're both pretty long. I believe I, I got about five and a half feet long wire and then I braided it with a four strand braid. And I'll post a video on how to do that braid. And it terminates in a Neutrik. 
I'm gonna pause the video real quick just so I can show you what it looks like on the inside and I can explain how do you wire to a Neutrik. It's not focusing, there we go. I'll show you how to wire to this Neutrik. Let me just pause it real quick. We've got the Neutrik opened up now. So the very, very top piece, there's three pieces. The bottom one is the ground, the middle one is the left ear cup, and the top one is the right ear cup. Just make sure you keep track of which wire is which, because when you start braiding them, it's easy to lose track of which wire went to which speaker. If you have a multimeter, it's easy to figure it out, but if you don't have a multimeter, you gotta, you gotta figure that out because it's just gonna make your life hell if you don't. Pausing again so I can put it back together. Everything back together. Let's talk about why people do this mod in particular. The idea behind it is that the jack isn't very good, but the main thing, the main reason why people want to do this mod, more specifically the dual entry mod, is because the sound has to travel through these steel bands in order to get to the other cup. And people argue that that degrades the sound. Whether or not you can actually tell the differences between metal, like, oh, this is made out of steel. This is made out of aluminum. This is made out of, uh, I don't know, titanium. I'm pretty sure people cannot tell the sound, right? People, generally speaking, cannot tell the sound difference between nickel and silver, right? The whole point of it is just to make it easier to conduct. So you're reducing the resistance of it. And it's the type of material that you're using is more of a concern when the cable is really, really long. We're talking longer than like 10 feet. This is a headphone cable. It's nowhere near as long as that. So the type of material that you're using isn't too important, especially since this isn't even that long. So are there any real benefits to doing this mod in particular? Outside of the fact that there was a guy in one of the comment sections of the last video I made who was talking about how he needed to replace the cable. So this is, uh, I'm sorry I couldn't go into more depth, uh, my friend, but this is, this is the best I can do just because uh, I started working, so I'm a little bit more limited on the amount of time that I have to make videos. But anyway, what are the benefits of doing this mod outside of I just need to replace the cable? Is there any actual practical use case to replacing the stock mod, to replacing the stock cable on these headphones as a mod? Well, for the benefit of me, this cable is a lot lighter than the original cable, and that's, to me, that's a benefit because it means that there's less of a pull on this side of the headphone and each side feels a lot more balanced. Obviously, you can use any type of material you want, any size cable that you want. This is 28 gauge wire. That's what I would recommend, but anything will really work for you. And if you want to do XLR, I might do a mod in like, the later future where I explain how to do like wiring for XLR. But that'll be for a different day. Anyway, this is just what I want to talk about. I just want to show, this is how you do the cable. This is what it looks like. This is what the baffle piece looks like. Hope you all take care. The next video I'm going to do is going to be, it's going to affect the sound. Like we're going to start moving into things that actually affect the sound of the headphone. But after that video, that's when we're going to get into the really big mod, like the, the really, really substantial mod. And we'll, we'll talk about that once we get to the next video. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Take care.